Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines. And today we are going to be introducing the Industries DLC into the build. So when we last left off, we went through and created a number of parks. So we created a city park, an amusement park, a zoo, and a nature reserve. And uh, today we are going to add in the Industries DLC, like I mentioned. So the Industries DLC is quite interesting. It adds in a number of factories that you can uh, add to the game uh, in four different industries. So the industries available to you are farming, forestry, oil, and ore. So today we are going to build the two sustainable industries, which will be forestry and agriculture. And then we are going to create uh, an, an ore and an oil industry and some unique factories in the next one. So a couple of things to know about these industries. First of all, you're, it's all going to be based on the available resources that you have. And so when you take a look at this, uh, you open up, you go into the, 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 the info views here, and then you click on your natural resources. And what you're going to see is that you have uh, four different types of resources available. So you have oil, you have forest land, egg land, and then this blue is ore. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, when you build an industry on a forest, you do not end up in a situation where your resources deplete over time. This is an evergreen, <laughs> bad joke, uh, resource that will just last in perpetuity. Same thing with egg land. Now, I know that that is not reality, but that's the way it works in the game. Uh, as far as ores and oil, those will deplete over time. That said, if you go into your, uh, into your settings on the main menu, you can actually enable a, a mod, so to speak, in the mods menu that will allow these resources uh, to, to never deplete. And that's available in the base game. It's, it's, uh, it's something that comes with the game. So if you want to do that, you can. It certainly makes it easier with these industries. Otherwise, you have to redevelop them over time. And they actually deplete rather rapidly. So something to keep in mind. But before we get started on our build, I do want to make a couple uh, corrections from our previous build. First of all, I, I still have not nailed this name. Now we've now we've nailed it. The overcharged experience. Yeah, experience. <laughs> and then over here at Zardus's Concrete Jungle Zoo, I put in two antelope enclosures, which was a mistake on my behalf. So I'm gonna make a quick fix here. I use the uh, the magic of YouTube to uh, get rid of the day-night cycle. All right, so the birdhouse is what I meant to add in here. So we'll have that right here. And that means that we have everything in place. The other thing I want to take care of is, it was pointed out on a number of occasions that I probably should have had a side gate to the zoo right here. So we're going to add that. That makes a ton of sense. We want to have quick access, <laughs> quick access to this. Uh, we want to have quick access to the metro station here, and that'll get us more uh, people visiting us here. So I want to look at my gates, and I'm going to use a zoo side gate. I'll add that right here. I believe it was pretty flat here, so no real concerns there. Our main concern is going to be connecting this up. And truthfully, that shouldn't be all that challenging. It might just look a little bit wonky. But we'll take care of it. And I find that the having angle with road guidelines and using the curved road tool can make a really nice connection there. So now it's, it's nice and cleaned up. We'll fix our fences and we'll be good to go and move on to the next industry or to the Industries DLC, rather. There we go, easy peasy. And now we have this right here, and people people will be able to leave the metro and walk directly to the zoo. In fact, we gotta, we gotta do one quick thing. Now we're good to go. All right, so let's get this going. Once we get this factory, uh, or the, the industries in place, there are a couple of things that come with the industries that I wanna talk about as well. And uh, they're, they're, they're pretty, it, they can be pretty impactful. So I'm going to start out by building a forestry industry, and then we're going to build an agriculture industry as well. So I'm going to start out just building this straight back. And then I think that I want to have the industry. 
let's turn on our resources when we're building our road. I think I want to go right along the, the line here. Right along the forestry line. We'll back this up a bit. Use our curved roads tool. And make a perfect connection. That is great. So we're also going to need to make a connection over to this land right here. That's going to be our egg land. And I, I think I might get that established right away. So let's again look at our resources. Nice, smooth connections. I didn't want to come in during this curve and make a connection there. So I figured I would make kind of a, 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 a curving movement right there. So now we have access to both of these and we're going to start out with our forestry industry. Uh, but actually, actually, we're going to start out in one other area first. So one of the things that you get with the industries DLC is uh, some industry roads. So the value of the industry roads is that they are cheaper to build. So this is a concrete road. It's 50 uh, cells per cell. <laughs> and if you look at this, it's 60. Uh, so the negative here is that it's louder, it creates more noise. So you don't want to use these in any areas that will have residential nearby. But if you, you want to put them in an industrial area, that's completely fine. So we're going to add those in there and uh, now we'll get started on our in industry. So if you want to make sure that you're not going to have traffic in these areas, I would highly recommend that you follow roadway hierarchy. So in roadway hierarchy, there's a couple things that you can do. So right here, these six lane roads kind of function as arterials. Arterials are the same as the highway. Uh, so that is used to carry uh, people and goods long distances and uh, there should be very little access or junctions uh, on these types of roads. Collectors link to those arterials, so they'll make longer local trips. Uh, so again, you can have more access. You can front buildings on here, but I wouldn't do anything that loads a significant number of buildings. For the arterials, I would try to load as, as infrequently as possible. Uh, and then we have the local roads, which is where all of your access comes from. You can have a bunch of junctions there. So uh, I like to go ahead and I've created this collector, which is linking up to our arterial or highway. And you can just come back here. You can just back it off even a little ways, but we'll go a little bit more. And again, 11 tiles is our is our minimum. If we want maximum density, I don't really care about maximum density right now. I just want to separate this uh, local road from this collector give a bit of a queue queuing distance and we might do more with this down the line um, but right now I'm just starting something basic so industries works a heck of a lot like the uh, park life DLC that we just introduced in the last build so you're gonna go into here into the garbage and industry tab you'll notice that all the industries are here and much like our previous DLC park life you'll need to start out with either painting a district or placing a starting building. So much like Park Life, it's not gonna allow me to just go ahead and place that building. So I'll need to go here into the districts and areas and paint an industry area. So I'll click on that and I can, I can be as neat or not neat as I want with this. So the moment I click it, it's gonna unlock some things for me, I believe, maybe not. <laughs> So I'm just going to make a, a fairly large district. We can always clean this up over time. And in fact, you might want to overshoot because you're, you're not going to be able to place buildings in areas that do not have industries. So better to overshoot. So now we have two different industries created. So let's go in here and actually create our industry. So I'm gonna create a forestry industry first and we have our forestry main building. So we'll go in here, click on something random so we can actually see where we're placing our building. And we'll place that somewhere approximately in the center. It doesn't need to be perfect. So this building is required to, to get started. And I wanna look at the terrain because I probably should have respected the topography a bit and I didn't. In fact, I'm going to rethink this entirely to respect the topography. So we see that the elevation increases this way, so we're gonna, we're gonna follow our terrain. And now when we place our industry main building, it shouldn't sink into the ground as much. There's a little bit there, but we can clean this up. Okay, so inside of here, once you have this, we'll, we'll need to get water here. So we'll do that now. And that is not underneath the roads where they belong, so we'll, uh, we'll get that fixed. We took some liberties throwing it underneath the interstate, not a big deal. 
Oh, and it looks like our zoo has upgraded. We have an elephant enclosure, flamingo enclosure, and sea life enclosure. So we might want to take a look at that in a bit. All right, so I got water to both places. We need to get some power out here as well. So we'll make a connection. I think we're just going to follow our, our highway here. Okay, so now we have everything we need to get the industry going. So what you will notice is we do not have electricity. We have it now. And we have workers out here, 21 of 40, uh, which is fine. We have a significant demand for industry, and we're going to fulfill that need here. So what you need when you're creating an industry are a couple of things. You're going to need the uh, production building, which in this case will be a tree plantation. You need your processing building, which in this case will be the sawmill. And then you need storage that is for the raw material that the production building creates. And then you'll need storage, which is warehouses for the finished good. And these, these, uh, there are multiple ways that you can process these goods. And we'll get into that in a minute, but I just want to get started on building something. So what we're going to do is we're going to build, I think a dirt road fits nicely in this. It might not be the fastest road or the prettiest, but it will do the trick. We'll look at our terrain again. Let me just send this straight back. It'll be fine. And I'll explain why it'll be fine in just a minute. So now I've selected our small tree plantation. Now there are different size tree plantations, but you got to level up your industry area to get there. So all we have is this small plantation right now. So I'm placing a few of them and they will need water as well. And then these are good to go. In fact, I don't even know if these need power. Looks like it, it looks like it does create that power halo, but it doesn't need it. So when you click on one of these small tree plantations, you can do a couple of different things. You can keep it as is, you can change it. So you can have a beech tree there. You can have a conifer, which apparently the conifer are palm trees. So uh, if you wanted to try to blend it in a little bit, you could look at the trees in the area and try to, to fit them in. So it looks like it's a mixture of, of these palm trees and conifer or conifer rather and and, uh, and beech trees so we could certainly do that in fact we could, we could do something like this we'll do palm trees on one side and beech trees on the other this isn't necessarily going to be the most attractive but we're, we're i'm demonstrating a point so you could go and clear the trees and then look for that same kind of tree and now just for aesthetics that really blends well it makes it seem like this forestry area isn't just a big planted mess of trees. Uh, so then the, planting those trees brings up some an interesting point with the forestry industry. This is the only industry that you can actually create your own area. So let's say you have an area like this without any trees. Check this out. So it took a little bit of money, but I was able to create my own industry area. And you could do this if you had an area where you wanted to place the forestry industry that didn't have any trees uh, or resources showing up there. This is bright green now. This is an area that would be well suited for the forestry industry. So we've got these two forestry uh, or these, uh, these eight forestry industry tiles. Uh, and those are going to be producing raw forestry products. But we need to store those. We can't just produce the products. So we're going to go into here and near the end, we see that we have small log yards. So what you see there is there's a capacity. It's 300,000. Whoops. <laughs> and when we look over here at our small plantation, we can see that it produces a little under 5,000 units per week. So we should be okay adding one of these in meeting the needs of this entire industry. I'll face this, actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll face this towards this road. They can come in here, dump these off before they get onto this local road. So there are a couple of different storage modes that you can, you can use. You can either balance this, fill it or empty it. Uh, if you're balancing it, you're going to export raw materials if you don't have processing capacity. Um, if you fill it and for some reason you're not keeping up with uh, your your production, you'll actually start to import that good. And if you have it set to empty, you will just export things immediately. So uh, those are some things to think about right now. Uh, you know, I, generally, I find that keeping it to balanced works well. 
Um, you're not going to get in a situation where you're in a, inadvertently importing a bunch of goods that you're trying to produce and you're not exporting a bunch of raw materials at a low cost. And right here you see that we're currently producing 24 tons of raw forestry products and we're exporting them for a measly 483 cells. So that's pretty sad. <laughs> that, that brings us to a total profit of 299, uh, not or 30, depending on how much we're producing at any given time. This will fluctuate. So you're gonna to start to see your weekly income fluctuating and that is based on when things actually export. So this is what we have going for us now. We can take our profit and do more. So what we're gonna do is create a little hub for our industry. So we're gonna come over here and we have our sawmill. So this can process about 3,200 units per week. So if we wanted to really keep pace with this, we'd probably need about 10 of these. Let's, let's build two for the time being. We'll make a little factory complex over here of, of processing mills. Actually, why don't we add more? And we even add a redundant connection to this road over here so that they can leave this quickly. And there's a neat menu that came up right here. So it, it explains the entire forestry industry. So as I click on this, uh, this, this processing building. You can see that we have the extractor buildings, that's the, uh, the plantations, the processing building, which can either be uh, pulp mills, which basically produce paper, uh, or you have these sawmills and wood plants that produce uh, plain timber. And then you can take that and feed it into, an, into a unique factory and get these uh, premium unique goods, luxury products that sell for the most. Uh, but for the time being, even plain timber is better than almost, uh, better than not processing it at all. So that said, again, you need a place to store this once it's finished. So you've got a couple of different options. So you've got this warehouse yard, small warehouse, medium warehouse, and a large warehouse. So they all have different storage capacities. And truthfully, the biggest difference that you're going to see is noise and uh, the look. <laughs> so, uh, then the capacity, obviously. So as you go up, the small warehouse has a larger capacity than the warehouse yard. The medium warehouse has a significantly larger capacity than the small warehouse. And then the large warehouse is, you know, basically almost two medium warehouses. Uh, so then when you're looking at the, 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 the cost, it kind of goes up proportionate uh, with a bit of a discount as with the larger warehouse. So I'm thinking it might be nice to have a medium warehouse right off the bat and then we'll look at our terrain and try to smooth things out one of the nice things about respecting the topography off the bat is that you don't end up with too many lumpies and bumpies you will have some and that's okay and we'll just leave this as is you need to come in and set your storage mode and your resource this is very important so we're going to come in here and we will select paper because or sorry we will select timber because this produces timber so now you're going to see this building or this well whenever we see some finished products they're actually going to take it directly across here now you see all of these forestry buildings dropping off wood here so they're going to take this move it into here and from in here at the at the sawmill once that's done they're going to take it to the medium warehouse and then we'll have trucks take this either onto the highway or to our cargo train terminal to export this out. And that's actually a good point. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have a cargo train terminal here to reduce some of the traffic that we're seeing here. You see that there's already quite a bit of traffic on this road. It's not a cul-de-sac anymore because we have two ways to get out, but it is still, there's a lot of traffic. This is the main artery and it's the shortest path and the game's gonna prefer it. So might be something to consider down the line. So we're going to leave this one and let this go. We're going to come over here and build a farm. So we're going to go over here. It's the exact same process. We again need that main farm building. And I think I'm actually going to build my first road here just so that I, I, I don't inadvertently block myself from doing that. And then I'll place my main farm building and I'm going to place that off the local road and that, that looks really nice i like the way that looks you should probably look at our junctions and maybe not have 
signalized intersections where they're not warranted. This one's iffy. This is really functioning as is kind of a, a minor arterial minor arterial at this point or a major collector, even though it's a, a, a minor collector, I, I should say, since uh, it's it's coming through here. So functional class also refers to the way that the roads are being used. So it's not just the size, uh, although that it's it's most simple to think of it as is mainly size. So we need to get power over here. So we'll do that right off the bat. So our power connection is now made. So at this point in time, we can start thinking about our industry area. So when we take a look, this entire area has some, some level of uh, egg suitability. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that uh, the industry, uh, the, that the egg industry and the forestry in industry are wholly incompatible and planting trees will actually sap the, the resource availability of uh, egg land and it doesn't come back. So even though I'm deleting these trees, you see that, that the areas that I deleted the trees just have no natural resources at this point. So don't go hog wild in an egg area planting trees. In fact, let's look at this one and watch what happens when we plant trees here. It's gone. And now all of the agriculture productivity in this area is gone forever. <laughs> so you got to be really careful with trees because that's that's what they do. Um, so I, I love landscaping. This is probably the one area where I say really be careful with that. So back to our industry. Uh, our egg industry has a couple of different paths that you can take. So first of all, you can have crop fields. Secondly, you can have fruit orchards. And thirdly, you can have animal pastures. So I mentioned, or I meant to mention anyway, that these assets conform to the environment, which is really neat. So you don't have to worry about lumpies or bumpies at all. They won't occur with these. So I'm gonna place some some of each asset type in here. Okay, so now here's what we have. We have, these are the crop fields and you can have either cotton, potatoes, corn, wheat, or greenhouses. So I'm, I'm, I'm from the Midwest, but this is not the Midwest. <laughs> so we're gonna think about that. And I think cotton is probably one of the more suitable resources. You know, this wouldn't make sense for corn or wheat, uh, potatoes, greenhouses would be fine. And over here, we have our fruit trees. This would be absolutely spectacular to have uh, as, as fruit trees. And we could, we could do anything here. We could mix them up. We could have a little, bit of, a little bit of everything if we wanted, or we could have that greenhouse. And if you want, if you want to kind of pretend that you have something special, and maybe this is a seed starting house or something like that, you could, you could do that as well. So I think that we might do that. that that's kind of a nice look. And then over here, these are our animal pastures. So we can have either cows, highland cows, pigs, or sheep. Uh, so why don't we have some cows, some sheep, and some pigs in the opposite order that I said them. <laughs> and then these obviously need water. You can't have a farm without water. That would be uh, animal abuse. So we're not going to do that. And this should clear itself right up. So now we need to think again about... Uh, where we're going to place our animal or where we're going to place our resources. So our silos will store resources for crops. So we can place these anywhere. We could place these over here. We could say we want to put this right over here next to our, uh, our, our, our cargo train, or we could put those right over here. So we'll place a couple of these and this is going to store our crops. Now, interestingly, both our fruit fields and our crop fields are crops. So all of this is going to go into here. And for our animal products, we have to have crops to be able to feed our animals. So if you didn't want to plant uh, crop fields, you could set these to fill and import all of your feed for your animals. And that would be a way to, to fulfill that need. Uh, but it's just something that, to keep in mind that that is what you need to, to make this work. So right here, that the reason why this isn't starting is this isn't, is yet to receive any feed. Uh, so these silos are currently being filled considering we haven't produced anything yet. So we're likely importing some things. And then once we have that, these farms are going to take in the raw materials, turn it into meat, 
and that will be exported so long as we store it somewhere. So again, we're gonna to need to think about warehouses. I think we'll place a small warehouse over here and we can set this to store animal products. So this will store animal products such as, uh, you know, produced by animal pastures, cattle sheds, milking parlors, and slaughterhouses. So it's just general animal product that will be stored in here. And this again, this I think we're gonna to set to export. So we're gonna we're gonna empty it. And anything that we get for animal products, we're just gonna sell right away. We can do the exact same thing over here with the uh, the, the plain timber, but I think that in short order, we're gonna to wanna to do something more. And what you'll see is that this industry area has already leveled up. We are currently processing about one fifth of the materials that we take in from the forestry area. We're exporting the rest. So we might want to do something to improve that. So let's come over here and take a look at what we've unlocked. So we have in this area now, we have a couple of different things. So we've unlocked the forestry workers barracks. We have a tr small tree sapling field and the sapling field produces just a bit more uh, in terms of production than our small tree plantation. So this is uh, 4,800 units per week. This one is 6,400 units per week. Same number of trucks, so something to keep in mind. We've also unlocked our biomass pellet plant which produces paper. So now we have this sawmill and we have a paper mill. They have different footprints, so that's something to keep in mind. And then we have our sawdust storage, which operates exactly the same as the uh, small log yard. The main difference is the look of it. And uh, it just, it, it, can, it can be a more natural look for one of these uh, biomass pellet plants. So something to keep in mind. So why don't we Go ahead and add one of these plants over here. And you might have noticed that we didn't get a notification that our forestry area leveled up. I want to fix that. So if you go into the start menu and then go into options and gameplay, it says hide industry area level up notifications. I don't want that. I want to see those notifications as they occur and know when I can in improve my industry areas. So I'm going to again go in here. We're going to turn off the overlay it gives us and add a couple of these in and you can see that these are huge factories it's producing paper and uh, they employ more workers so this is 70 workers this is 46 and when we go and take a look into here we'll notice that this the process the production rate is is the same so uh, if you are looking for lots of jobs and you don't need a lot of production the paper mill might be the route to go for you so I think we're going to, again, we're going to need another uh, warehouse and we can go with a smaller warehouse because we only have two of these factories. We had three of these other ones. And truthfully, this is probably overkill. <laughs> I just thought it would be kind of neat to have a, a bigger warehouse. So let's go in here, could add another, and we, maybe we could add something more significant. It appears to me that this warehouse will fit about the same number or it'll fit in that same width so this is six tiles deep so I can count two three four five six and make the connection here and fit that in really nicely now again I have to set this to paper and the nice thing about this is it's internal anyway there is going to be some stuff that sits outside which I don't love for paper but <laughs> you know it is, it is what it is. And then we need water over here. Anyone who's lived next to a paper mill knows that they need water. In fact, you might even see these along the water, uh, especially since back in the day, logs were floated up rivers to get to these factories. And now these are waiting for resources, which is kind of inter interesting. So not enough raw materials. So we have this here and it is full, but it's not getting these resources where they need to go. And to me, that, that says that this is potentially in the wrong place, maybe facing in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna put this on this other road here rather than this, this road and get them to come in here. Now, if you wanted to really focus on circulation and create a circulation pattern, you could 
you don't have one-way roads so that you come through here you pick up the material you drive around you drop it off at the factory and then you're forced to leave there's there's no one right way to do this that's certainly one way that you could but you got to think about the path that someone might be forced to take if they want to come here they're forced to come around that way that said why don't we give it a go so we're going to use our industry roads because i think we should have probably used these anyway noise is not a factor here so now we're saying you come in here you go out there you can come all the way around uh, we don't have directionality on these roads yet because uh, this will function as a collector couplet this is another collector couplet and we want to make sure that people can get around here if for some reason they travel down here so this should create a smoother traffic flow in this area and when we take a look you'll see that that big red mark that was here is now spread out between these two roads which should improve things and all of these buildings now have resources. This one, I guess, is still missing some. One of the things to think about that we made a mistake on now is if you wanted to come here and you, you had materials here and you wanted to drop this off at the factory, now you have to leave the whole site. <laughs> so that's a mistake. That is not what we want to do. So that to me means that this road right here actually can't be if we want to create a circulation pattern that's logical, we need to allow them to come back around if they need to. And that'll do the trick. So there we go. This one is still having issues. I'm not 100% sure why it is having the problems it's having. Looks like it's filled now, so it just took a little bit, a little bit of time. So we can come back over here and look at our industry area info. And we can see that now we have a little bit more uh, production here um, of refinement of our raw products. And again, these numbers jump around as these uh, factories have resources available to them. But overall, we're gonna when we see this jump up, it's probably gonna go through the roof because of our industry, uh, because of our because of our finished goods. In fact, let's speed it up and see what this jumps up to. And as we're waiting, I see that we've now leveled up our our uh, agriculture area. We have a flour mill, bakery, workers barracks, cattle shed, and small barns. So we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. So what I'm noticing is that exporting some of these products is taking longer than maybe I would prefer. And also, this is completely filled here, which means that we're going to start exporting this. So maybe we should think about building a few more of these raw lumber storage areas. In fact, I'm going to come over here. We'll place a couple of these sawmill sheds at the end of this road here. Sawdust storage. And look at this. Now we've reached level three here and we get printing press, medium tree plantation and large log yard. So once these fill up, we should be in a little bit better of a location uh, or a little bit better spot with all of this. And you start to see these fill up. Very good. So while we're over here, let's look at that level three building that we've unlocked and our workers barracks. So it's important to have the workers barracks. Uh, these increase the efficiency of the workers in the area and uh, by 5% each, maximum of 100%, you need to have it inside of the industry area. So these could be a nice complementary building to that, that main industry building that you have. We'll pause this for a moment. We'll add a workers barracks out there. And then why don't we extend this road? And we'll add a couple of them out here. So what you'll notice is that when we go in here, now we have this efficiency bonus and we are dropping uh, some of the pollution because of the extra extractors and processing buildings that we have. And I'm noticing that we're having a water shortage, which is creating some issues. I may just place a water tower out here, which will be kind of an industry water tower. Now, thankfully, the, the forestry industry doesn't really produce pollution except for in the production buildings. So we can add this out here and it'll be just fine. That'll get us by for a minute while we work on this area. So I wanna make sure that our, we got our bonus. We did. Things are looking good. We're still losing lots of money though. So why don't we go back in here and we'll take a look at the buildings that we have available to us. And you'll notice that 
that printing press is not available here. That's because it's in our unique factories. So we have a couple of those available to us now. We have a furniture factory where we take paper and plain timber and turn it into furniture. We also have a printing press where we take, it actually takes, uh, I believe that's paper and, let's see, paper and I believe that's oil and turns it into a unique good. So we can't do that one yet. If we were to build that, it would just never have a resource available to it, but we can certainly build our furniture factory. And this doesn't need to be anywhere near this if we don't want it to be. In fact, we could say that our furniture factory is uh, going to be in the heart of our downtown, if that's what we wanted. We could, we could say it's gonna be in our industrial area over here, and we're gonna have that very close to our cargo area so it exports right off the bat if we were going to do this though there's something that we should probably keep in mind and that is that we should have some sort of storage over here for both the resources that we want so the plain timber and the paper and the unique factory output good so we're going to need to build multiple warehouses over here so i'm going to build small ones and we're going to use some eminent domain over here we know that we're gonna need three of those. So this one right here is going to be for our unique factory products. And we're gonna empty those right off the bat. And then over here, we are going to have both our paper and our timber. So we could set these to fill. We wanna get most of our goods right over to this storage area and into here. And if we are running low, feel free to import some. And I think off the bat, that's probably gonna be what happens unless we uh, focus a little bit more on some of the traffic that we're having. So I'm noticing that we're having some backup here and before we move on to some of our industry leveling up, we need to fix this. And I think what we're gonna do is build another roundabout and build another cargo train terminal. So again, like I did last time, I'm gonna go through here and I'm kind of curious to see the length of this one that I built before. I went 180 units or 160 units across. So I'll do that again, divide that in half. Then I'll keep the cross in there to ensure that we don't have any weird issues in the future with that connection being made. And then I'm gonna build this bridge as long as it could possibly be. Now that's generally about 12 road units. We need to go three up to get above the highway. Three didn't work this time, so I'm gonna try four and it doesn't like the pillar placement. So that is gonna be a limiting factor for us. So we might just wanna build this first. So if you get stuck with that, if you turn off grid and road length and just have angle on, you can place that pillar right in the center there and then we can turn our road length back on. And there we, we were able to go up 12 and now we should be able to upgrade this no problem. And then again, like I did last time, I'm gonna upgrade this to be a highway segment. And it's really not liking the center pieces I have there. I'm gonna hope it doesn't get all out of, out of skew. And this can just happen from time to time and it stinks, but we're gonna see if we can make it work. It's telling me that the distance is too short. I'm gonna just work on this a little bit. Sometimes you gotta play with these to make it work. It, it stinks, but uh, it happens. Okay, and for whatever reason, the game found my angles to be very offensive and required me to basically rebuild everything I had already done. That's okay. It happens. And again, doesn't love this. I'm really hoping this doesn't break the roundabout. We, we, got, we got away with one there. Uh, most of the time, that'll break the roundabout. So I want to make sure that this is all counterclockwise. And that'll ensure that we have movements that aren't signalized all the way through here. And then we want to get our exit ramps correct as well. So this should flow significantly better. I always like to go through and double check to make sure that the game didn't throw any arbitrary junctions in. And you can see this is all clearing out, which will really help us in this, in this industry area. And in fact, our traffic was at 90%. We're gonna see this clear up over time. 
There we go. We're at 9091 back, back, back where we were before. So feeling good about that. We could probably upgrade this. You see that there's a bit of slowing here if we wanted to try to clear things up. This is an arterial. So we could go ahead and make this six lanes and see if that improves things at all. The problem is that the, the lane choosing is just not great in the game. This did allow some, or, or make it more attractive to go in that center lane. So it's, it's a bit of a help there. Uh, but we are seeing some weird stuff that'll clear up over time as the AI rechooses paths, but you, you might still see some, some wonkiness here. Uh, without mods, you're kind of stuck with that, but it's still flowing, so it's not something to be overly concerned about. And if you really wanted to resolve the traffic in this area, the way to do it is probably to add a cargo terminal. And we have a really nice access for one right here, so why not add another one? So what I'll do here is just add a quick terminal. We're going to want this to go in both directions. So if we have it only facing this way, what we're going to see is they can export goods, but they can't bring it to the other factory. So we're going to want to make sure it's connected in both directions. If you wanted to improve the aesthetics, you could attempt to have more lines here. Uh, there's not really a huge need for that if you're just playing the game and want to get by uh, but it's certainly something that you could do if you wanted to, to, to emulate storage tracks or something of that nature so there you go and then this will need power and water and once we have that this is going to become a very important uh, part of this industrial area and we'll probably want to take a look at our junction here and if you wanted to maximize access from this industry area, you might think about making a connection here. Maybe even make this one way so that uh, they are unable to, you know, kind of circle back around and do a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, all up to you. And, you know, because this is a dirt road and because this is kind of a low volume road, I don't know that I'd want to make this connection, but I also don't want to get everyone onto this collector coming up here, turning around, doing a bunch of crazy stuff. So uh, all things to think about right now, this is a cul-de-sac. I think that I might let my desire not to have that be a cul-de-sac win out. And that should improve things there a bit. And you see that these this road has already got use as we have some of these vehicles. This right here has a full load exporting uh, forestry products. So it's, 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 a, it's a good thing that we added that road in there. So now when we look at this, we're starting to make some money. We're outputting some raw forestry products. We could look at our, uh, at our policies. Uh, what you see is that if we improve logistics, we can increase the storage capacity of our extractors and processing, processor buildings, but it increases the, the upkeep of the industrial buildings. We could also have automation, which would increase our output and upkeep by 10%. And then safety supervision, which uh, makes every worker uh, a little bit, a little bit happier, a little bit healthier, uh, at a cost of one cell per worker. Which in this case, we have uh, 525 workers, so that's 525 cells per week. We are losing money, and now we're going to lose even more. <laughs> so I didn't. I don't think I've mentioned how you level up, and there are really two things that control leveling up. It is. Uh, your workers and then the, the amount of resources that you have and right now we're under that worker level So if I want to get there, I could either build some residential nearby But we don't really have a need for it or I could build more buildings that have employees because they'll just get some uh, So that that's that's one thing and then we have our resources, which is just our production So one thing I could do I know that we are completely filled up at our forestry products. I could go in here and maybe build one of these large lumber yards. And this has seven workers currently employed there, 20 total. The reason why we're not hitting that maximum number of workers is we are lacking uneducated and educated workers. So uneducated have no education at all, educated just an elementary school education. And that can be a constant problem. We don't have a neighborhood now that uh, has any of the schools out policies applied and we might want to create that neighborhood if we're having problems with those workers. So that said, we now have enough workers to reach our next level. We just need to have enough production. 
So we're good there. The other thing you could do if you're curious about the, the amount of money that you're taking in, in these areas, go into your, your, into your uh, financial pain, your economic pain, and see what's happening here. What we can see is that our income is more than our expenses. And so we are creating a profit. Now, and that's bouncing around uh, based on exporting, when we actually export the goods. So things to keep in mind. So over here, we have our agricultural industry. We don't have enough employees or production to get to our next level. And we have these policies too. Let's turn them on. Maybe we won't have worker supervision since this isn't making any money right now. And we'll add those down the path. So again, we could add some additional uh, industry building so we have a flour mill now where we take our crops and produce flour so this is another one of those buildings that if you wanted to put it in a downtown area and have a bakery next to it i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't uh, hold that against you at all i do that quite frequently i think it creates a pretty unique aesthetic but i'm going to try to keep this all consolidated and what you'll see is i'm outside of the industry area so i can't place it over here so if you were to place this somewhere else you could do exactly what you do with the uh, park area if you want to jump it and just create a line and then cut it off and this is the same industry area now so that's something that you could do uh, since this is so close i'll just keep it attached I have a little little thing that jets out here we need to give this some names this will be tim eister farms and we'll have Imperial Jedi wood products. There we go. I like it. So now we are going to come over here and add our flour mill. And then we could also have uh, our cattle shed over here now as well. So why don't we add one of those? Again, we're producing more meat products. So something to keep in mind. And then we have our barns, which can sometimes look a little bit better than these silos. In fact, why don't we move the silos over here? near our flour mill and we'll have a barn over here next to these products over here and then we'll add another one near our cattle sheds so I feel like that's a, a good look so now we have this it's producing flour and if we have production of a of a good we know that we need a warehouse to store it in so we are going to grab a small warehouse we'll put that right over here and we will set this to flour so that is a, a great benefit for this area as well and if we wanted to jazz this up we could certainly add some landscaping or fencing we just need to be really careful about the amount that we're using because we can't paint more uh, egg land in unless we have mods so let's say we wanted to do this I would say space it out a bit because you already see it getting darker just by me adding this and that is reducing the production so the smarter way to do this is probably just to grab some fencing and you could certainly have a go on the uh, follow the grid that's an easy way of doing it have your angles on and now that creates a real easy fence this is already fenced in so maybe I'm not overly concerned about that and uh, I've created a nice little farm area right here and look at that traffic that the farm produces this is one of the things that I, I know many people point out is something they don't love about the game is that the farms produce kind of a, a ridiculous amount of traffic. <laughs> you know, uh, you'd never expect to see this on a farm, but it does. It's a limitation that you got to work with, and you might want to think about that as you're plotting out your farm. This is a gigantic cul-de-sac right now, and if we have another road out here, it'll likely reduce some of the pressure. And this might be a reason that you want to update this and, and have a, a, some in industry roads through here so that you can control directionality, something you can't do on the dirt roads. So there we go there. Speaking of that, I think that we'll make this an industry road and we are going to add a unique factory off here. So we'll go into here, we'll go into unique factories and we have a bakery where we can take flour and crops and meat products, animal products, and turn them into baked goods. So why not think about this? We'll place that right here at the end of that bend, and we're gonna need a place to store unique products. 
So it wouldn't hurt to also have a, a place for animal products out here. Right now we have this warehouse. We could certainly add another one uh, or two out here. So why don't we do that? We'll add two warehouses. Oh, and our, we've leveled up to level four for our zoo. Another thing to think about. I'm just reorienting these a bit, just just so that it's, it's to my liking a bit more. Oh, and we have reached level four on Jedi Wood Products. So we've got some more things to, to, to look at, and we'll do that in just a moment. So we're going to want to set one of these to Animal Products. And then the other one we're going to want to set to Unique Factory Products. And truthfully, I don't love the pattern that we're going to get here. We might want to think about this down the line. Maybe this isn't the best organizational scheme for this. In fact, it might be far better to do something like this. So this is our, we'll set this to unique factory goods. We'll set this to animal products. We'll extend the collector out and then we will upgrade these to create a directionality on this road. And then we'll want to also have we also want to have animal or uh, crops over here as well. So we'll add a barn in here. And I'm going to set this to fill. And this to fill as well so that we're filling these up, processing them here. And then we are going to empty our unique factory products as soon as we get them. So over here we have our flour. And so flour is another thing that maybe we want to improve its location in our logistics process. Okay, so what I've done now is I've made it so that the crops go into the flower. The flower, once it's finished, comes here and then goes across the street. So it's all a circular process. I've really organized it in a way to maximize what we have going on here. So if you wanted to fill this in with similar looking buildings, you could certainly go through here Add an overlay district. Set your district type to agriculture. And I could fill this in with regular zoning and create a district that feels a little bit more full so that it doesn't feel empty like this. And now we'll just have some, you know, some of the, the vanilla agriculture buildings filling in here. So that could be a way to, to make this look a little bit more full. What you see is that they have plenty of products. Everything in the supply chain is working well. They're creating pastries and this is empty. And what that's going to ultimately mean for us, Myrtle Square, <laughs> is that we're going to start producing a profit. Maybe we can enact some of these policies and make this a really attractive place to work. We are still short on workers to get this to level up. And we, one thing I noticed is we have plenty of products produced. So if I go through here, and I add, I'm gonna add in another cattle shed. And see if that gets us to where we need to be. Cattle shed has 55 workers. We've got 42 over there. This should do the trick. Let's see if we get there naturally or if I need to add more workers to this area. I think we're starting to see some significant issues with educated and uneducated workers. We just don't have them. And we might need to build a neighborhood that will support this area. And truthfully, we have not done anything to try to reach our next population milestone. So it might not be a bad idea to think about that now anyway. So we need to add about another uh, 2,000 people on. We're going to have a low density residential neighborhood out here. Let's look at our terrain. It's pretty flat. So what I think we're going to do is just... We'll extend this out here. I got really picky with the roads there. Probably didn't need to, but uh, it's just something that uh, I have a very specific look I'm going for in my mind here. And uh, if you're really picky about it, you get exactly what you're looking for. But again, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's all up to you. It's your imagination that can go wild here. And I'm letting mine go wild. I think I'm going to move this block to create some larger blocks. 
This is a gigantic cul-de-sac right now, so that's not very desirable. So we're going to want to create another outlet, and I think we might make it directly to this farming district, which will create another crossing here, which I don't love, but uh, we're going to allow it. So because we have that connection, we're going to need to think about our policies in this area, because if we don't set policies, we might see farming vehicles deciding that that is their quickest path to get to where they need to go. We do not want that at all. There we go. Nice little neighborhood. So let's get this all connected up with water pipes. And I added a connection here for some redundancy. And what you see is we already have, well, it's a garbage truck, so that's okay. I was, I was worried that it was a farm vehicle coming through here. So we do have a number of at-grade railroad crossings that could create a problem for us in the future. And we might want to think about that. All right, so we've reached level three for our farm area. And what that does is give us a lemonade factory milking parlor, medium crop and medium fruit field. So we're going to paint an area over this. So we have the spring district, which is just fine. And we're going to look at our policies here. There are two policies I want to make sure we have in place. Number one, we are going to ban heavy traffic. And number two, we are going to... Ah, interesting. So generally in an industrial area or near it, if I want to make it a, 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 an area that doesn't have a ton of education, I'll go ahead and use the uh, schools out policy, but that is not available to us yet with this DLC pack. So my mistake, you get used to all of the DLCs and I thought that we had it available to us. So I will just place an elementary school here and that is it. And that will be the way that I, I solve for this. And we will add in a couple of parks and that is about it. So everyone will have access to a park nothing too extreme so as to uh, create a high value area and it might not be a bad idea to add some fire coverage in this area as well and some police coverage to serve this entire industrial area we'll even include a clinic and a post office why not <laughs> and it'll also make our power connection hopefully it does not <laughs> Then to create a balanced neighborhood, we'll create a bit of a main street here. We'll go up to the school. And then through the neighborhood, we are going to have mostly residential. We're going to keep back from those main roads. We're not going to zone our collector network. And we're going to put trees around there so as to prevent... Uh, we, we, we just want to make sure that we're not going to have any noise or other externalities. In this area i'm going to use the small beach that we used over there and i want to show some of the issues so these roads have a ton of noise so we're going to want to make sure that we have plenty of trees to dampen that sound and we might even want to consider upgrading that road we're also going to place trees all the way along the rail corridor to to buffer the sound and along the highway as well we were able to reduce the most significant impacts to this neighborhood by having dense zoning around here. Let's speed this up and see if this gets us to our population milestone requirements. I can see that we've got problems with commercial, which is the reason why we're not seeing more growth. So we might need to add a little area over here for commercial development. We have some high density things happening over here already. So I'm just going to add some high density commercial along here and hopefully that'll absorb some of this need that we have we'll extend the grid a bit more too we see that this is developing fairly rapidly because we have a strong demand for these different uh, zoning types over here so that's a, a good thing for us and it'll help balance things out we're gonna see some population growth which is good uh, one of the things that's going to hold us back is our water availability. So why don't we add another one of these water pumps? Maybe two? And that should help us out quite significantly. Because uh, once you start to, to, to run in a kind of a, a balanced place, you start to see that you're not going to produce as much 
uh, or you're not, your demand will start to wane for certain certain things. I think we're going to do the exact same thing with power. Maybe we'll we'll make this our green district, and we will have a little solar power plant over in this area as well. It'll be a show showpiece for the for the uh, for the city. So I think we're meeting all of our needs. We should check garbage as well, and our status there is great. And now we're starting to gain population slowly over time. But again, lots of commercial demand, which is going to hold us back from being able to level up again. So here I want to make a curve and I want it to line up. And this is where freeform tool comes in really handy because you can mirror some of those curves. This one's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be pretty darn good. I'm going to use a bit of eminent domain here to make a roadway connection that I probably should have made. That's a really long block length. I did leave a gap here for it. So I should have done that on both blocks. I didn't, but uh, it's city skyline, so we have a solution. Eminent domain. Okay, so just quickly built a couple of block blocks to try to get our population up a bit, and we are struggling. It is not a quick growth at this point in time, and I think a, a large part of that is just we haven't focused on it and this is not a, as a result we're not really in a spot where we need a heck of a lot of residential development we need basically everything else <laughs> so i'm trying to create a transition between these neighborhoods and that's why i'm starting the transition down to this lower density and then increasing the density as we as we get down the line. And that is finally starting to get our population to pop, which is a good thing. We have stuff over here that's just not developing no matter what I do. <laughs> so it's a, it's a bit discouraging. Over here, I believe we had some terrain challenges we might develop here because this would be a, an area I would expect to see develop first because of the ease of development in this area. And now that we have our agriculture industry, what I think we're going to do is rezone some of this. We'll eliminate the urban agriculture. Change that to commercial. And have a, a little neighborhood commercial district. Also remove a bit of population in this area and replace that with offices, which should get some of our other uh, residential districts to pop. And then we're going to just kind of go down the line and add another block. We are going to need to make sure that we are connected because I don't do not believe that we are. And we'll continue to just kind of build out the city rapidly by building out our grid. That's what a grid's good for. That's historically why you saw so many grids, at least in America, because it's very easy to rapidly expand a grid just like that. Water pipes. Just continue down the same path. Probably not the most efficient way to, to, to put them in place. Can certainly improve that. Okay, so we're only a thousand away from meeting our population threshold, and I think we could get there. It's getting a little dark though. I, the one mod I do have in here allows me to adjust the daylight. We'll get that a little bit brighter. So uh, we're gonna just continue to expand. We need commercial and we need it bad. So I'm gonna look and see where it would fit in the best. And maybe we'll mirror this a bit. We'll come down here and finish off this block with it with some uh, commercial and residential mixed. And again, this is where the freeform tool comes in really handy. You just gotta grab the nodes that it tells you to. For the most part, anyway. Sometimes it gives you bad nodes. <laughs> and make the connections. And then this area, we have uh, mostly lower density at this point, so I think we're going to continue that pattern. Make a block of commercial. So think of that as a little shopping center. And then lots more residential, which will help us reach our threshold. Thankfully, that's all covered by our existing water pipes. Look at how quickly we're adding population at this point, uh, hundreds at a time. And there's still a little bit of demand for residential, which is good. It means that if we continue to meet the, the need for commercial, we're probably going to be okay. 
And one of the places where I think we could add some more is along this train corridor. I have a main street along here. I don't love having a bunch of zoning along here, but I think we're gonna we're gonna allow it. In fact, uh, we're gonna switch this. We'll make that office. We'll make this both of these office. Office generates a low number of trips, so I'm not overly concerned about the trips that it's creating because it's not gonna load much onto this onto this arterial. Uh, commercial loads more, residential loads a lot. So, all things to keep in mind. Curious about our death care situation. We are okay there, but we do have a little, couple of issues. We could empty our cemeteries if we wanted to into our death care facilities. Maybe we want to take a look at that and see if there are any other cemeteries or any other crematoriums that we could add. Probably need to use a bit of eminent domain to fit them in, but they are needed facilities. And I would look at this more as redevelopment of a home into a cemetery, which does happen from time to time. We'll add this over by the clinic as well in our new neighborhood and that will hopefully resolve all of our death care issues both of our cemeteries are full so i'm going to empty those and what they're going to do is take the bodies to the crematorium dispose of them and uh, then we could either eliminate our cemetery or we could just decide that we want to uh to fill it right back up it's our call We are seeing some breakdown of this junction, so at some point we might want to do more here. I would suspect that most of this breakdown is occurring due to people moving in, because we are getting a significant weekly change, and uh, that's that's a, that's only good for us. That's only good for us. And things are starting to sputter a bit, so we're going to add a bit more, and I think that we're going to add a commercial area along the park. Actually, there was way too much commercial in this area. We're going to add. We're going to extend our residential area down because we don't want to oversaturate this. Now, we're not mixing our uses very well. We were when the town was smaller and now as rapid growth is occurring, you see just large swaths of zoning, which does happen from time to time uh, as, as demand occurs and, and a developer owns land. Uh, they might be more interested in one type of property more than another. So that's where you end up with some of those development decisions that maybe we don't love oh and we missed our name here okay now we have the overcharge egg experience and the timing is good because we've hit our population threshold and that is where we end our episode thank you so much for sticking with me this was a marathon <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did hit the like button if you aren't subscribed please consider doing so and hit the notification bell if you want to know when i release new videos we love a brief city tour and i will leave you with that right now take care